of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. A word of worship in one or two minutes. Just express your depth of gratitude to the King of Kings, even the Lord of Lords. We bless you, O God of heaven, our Father, our Maker, our Lifter, our God. the Lord to give you a visitation tonight. Shabrangos Kaba, Majesty, we bless you. Hallelujah. David Dan will sing for us a song very briefly just to charge our hearts and then we'll go straight to the ministry of the word. As you listen, let your heart be blessed. Just soak in that atmosphere of worship. And it 
came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. We want to explore the power that is in prayer. Teach us to pray. Father, we pray like the disciples prayed. Teach us to pray. We know there is power in prayer, but I pray that you help us understand the ordinances and the pattern of the ministry of effectual prayer. The prayer that works, the prayer that produces. May we, O oh God, by this series, be a people who can command power in the place of prayer. Tonight, O oh God, I pray that the grace be supplied in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated if you can. Let's be very sensitive. Teach us to pray, part two. Is anyone under the anointing close to you, whether inside, outside, just guide them so that I believe tonight that God is going to be depositing that grace for effectual prayer. The, the prayer ministry of many believers is full of activities, religion and emotion, but with very little power. So God wants to grant us grace to be able to be men and women who can pray effectually. Are we together? Psalm 65 verse 2, O thou that hearest prayer, it says, to thee shall all flesh come. So there is a God that can answer prayer. Idols cannot answer prayer. The Bible records that when the angel of death struck the nation, please let's settle down. When the angel of death struck the firstborn sons in Egypt, that Ramesses carried his son and dropped that son to an idol and began to call upon that idol. And he learned once again that idols are only the works of the hands of men. But the Bible says, O thou that hearest prayer, whoever can hear is alive and whoever can hear can also answer hallelujah please make sure you get last week's teaching we may not have the time to go into it again but just maybe one or two things to just tie it up i started last week by challenging us that the bible calls believers many things the bible calls us joint heirs the bible calls us light the Bible calls us salt. It's important that the believer not only know who he, uh, who he is in Christ, but the, the various names that represent your dimensions. The Bible calls us ambassadors. In Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, the Bible calls us kings and priests. That means there is the priestly ministry of the believer. Are we together? It is not a ministry to men of God. It is not a ministry to serious Christians. It is a ministry to everyone who has come under the Lordship of the Christ. And that the major assignment of the priestly ministry is offering that incense. The incense of prayer. The prayer ministry of the saints is the priestly ministry of the saints. Any believer that does not pray is neglecting his or her priestly ministry. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 13 that his house would be called a house of prayer. So not only are believers people of prayer, even the house of God is mandated to be called the house of prayer. We took our time to explain last week why believers should pray. I think that's where we stopped. Um, please listen again and again for the various reasons why the Bible mandates that believers pray. Hallelujah. Part 2 here, we'll just go straight to Matthew chapter 6. Please turn with me. We're studying scripture now. Matthew chapter 6. 
If you do not love the word of God, your spiritual life is under attack. I repeat, if you do not love the word of God, your spiritual life is under attack. Praise the Lord. A car that hits fuel will not move. Is that correct? Yes. Fish that hits water will die. The Bible says man shall not live. So this is not just the issue of prosperity or success. This is about living. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. So if that word that proceeds from the mouth of God, captured in scripture, um, does not attract your spirit, is a sign that you are dying. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, this is the teaching ministry of Jesus. And let me say it again, that one of the major ways that Jesus built the disciples was through the ministry of the teaching of the word. And he set for us a template. That means believers are built primarily by the teaching of the word. Are we together? Not just to preach. Understand the difference between preaching and teaching. Preaching means to declare, to bring you into an awareness of a reality. To teach means to explain, to show you the operation, the dynamics of that spiritual reality. So I can tell you, in God's economy, there is favor. That's preaching. When I now open it and begin to show you, if I say in the economy of God, there is salvation, that's preaching. But now when I begin to teach you, I show you the methodologies and then I show you how to activate it. Believers are primarily built. Please listen carefully. Believers are not just built by reading. Please listen. Believers are not just built by praying. Believers are built when the word of God that contains many things, the promises of God, the ways of God, the systems, the modus operandi of God is taught accurately. Listening to it and understanding it will now supply the grace to walk in the truth therein. Are we together? The protocol for really receiving the power of God is that you must get the light that necessitates that power. The power of God comes in your life to defend and to validate. Never forget this. The purpose of the power of God in your life um, is to defend. Defend something you believe and then to validate it in your life and in the life of others. That means if there is no light, there is no need for the power of God to come in defense. Every time Jesus made a statement, the power of God was released to back that statement. And to validate that what he said was true. So, to just begin to randomly search for power without a passion for knowing the ways of God is what will delve people into witchcraft. Are we together? Will delve people into all kinds of error. Remember that the first thing they did was that the wine was first water before it became wine. Are we together? It was first water in the jar. Then from water, it started changing to wine. If your own starts wine directly, it's not God that is doing that miracle. If it's that miracle, it will start from the word of God. That water, then it will now be turned to wine. Praise the Lord. So believers must be taught. The teaching ministry, you see, it is because of this that theologically speaking, there is still argument in the body of Christ whether the fivefold ministry should be called fivefold or fourfold because the teaching ministry um it is true that that there is the office of a teacher as it were but then teaching is not so much an office it is the authorized methodology for communicating spiritual truth so it doesn't matter whether you are operating in the apostolic in the prophetic pastoral evangelistic in any case you will need the teaching ministry are we together when there are no teaching priests that congregation and that territory is already in trouble a teaching priest not just a praying priest a teaching priest praise God so Matthew chapter 6 Jesus is teaching now 
and we began to explore some things last week remember we spoke about um, certain foundational mindsets that we must have when approaching the prayer ministry number one he dealt with the issue of hypocrisy verse 5 number two he also spoke about the issue of entering into your closet i took out time to explain that and then he said to not use vain repetition i explained that very thoroughly um we're going to go to the prayer proper now and then to explore it praise the lord are we still together right so um the prayer starts from verse 9 matthew chapter 6 please from verse 9 look up jesus is about to teach now on prayer and he said after this manner now notice that jesus never said by this recitation the idea was not the recitation the idea was not the chanting the idea was that i am putting for you a system a manner an approach are we together that when you want to approach remember what necessitated this lecture was their lack of results it was very clear that their prayer was not producing results it was not prayerlessness it was lack of effectual prayer that necessitated this lecture the disciples were already praying this is not about lack of prayer this is about prayer that produces results they were already praying and they noticed that jesus prayed in a certain way and got results and every time they prayed they didn't have results and they said look let's stop shadow boxing teach us to pray even as john taught his disciples so effectual prayer must be taught you don't just pray you are taught how to pray are we together we'll run it down and then i will take it one by one verse nine let's read together one to read after this manner therefore pray ye uh-huh our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread 12 and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors 13 and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen jesus is teaching now so let's look at what jesus was saying after this manner that means use this approach not use these words use this approach are we together so jesus is telling us that something about this prayer construction please go back to verse 9 holds the key to getting results in prayer are you ready number one our father he says when you begin to pray pray in this manner our father everybody say our father jesus is teaching here that the kind of prayer that produces results must first start with an understanding of who you are praying to are we together now the word father is the word abba a double b a it means source it means sustainer it means preserver he is not saying call on god he's saying have a revelation of the fatherhood of god as you approach prayer there are certain informations about fatherhood that will sponsor your faith and your confidence while praying are we together jesus said a number of things about fathers number one romans chapter 8 and verse 15 the bible tells us that as believers we have been given the right and the access to cry abba father media please walk with me romans 8 15 for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear notice now notice that the moment you are introducing fatherhood two spirits must exist one bondage two fear so that when you approach the prayer ministry that produces result if it is the fatherhood of god then it cannot coexist with fear and a sense of bondage are you following me now he says that he has given us the spirit of adoption and by that spirit we cry abba father matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 i want us to hurry up matthew 7 and verse 11 matthew not amos matthew 7 and verse 11 
Now, look at this. Jesus is teaching here now. And he said, if you, being evil, that means enshrined in your nature is evil. You are evil. But that even in your evil, you know how to give good gifts. Is that true? Yes. Terrorists have wives, true or false. Terrorists have children, true or false. Many of them are very responsible fathers. Is that true? Jezebel was a very wicked woman, but was an outstanding wife. The king never complained about Jezebel. She comes and she sees her husband having a, a poor countenance. Because of that, she takes the initiative to punish Elijah for making her husband's mood change. Now, that's a very good wife. Forget that she's a witch. I'm not talking about her ministry in terms of the demonic operation. I mean her family. Are we together? So I'm just trying to buttress on this. The Bible says men are evil. But that even in our evil, the moment our fatherhood is invoked, there is a sense of compassion. And that we can still leave provision to be good, not to everybody, to our children. So if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts. Everybody say, give good gifts. Not gifts, good gifts. That means you have to select no, this is not profitable for my child. This is not profitable for my child. This is profitable. Good gift means there is a process of carefully selecting it. Meaning you can trust anything that comes from that father because it was selected. It was not randomly picked. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, then how much more will your heavenly father give good things, shout good things, that means that Jesus came to correct a perception about the Father. Because until then, they did not believe. They believed that both good and bad and everything came from the Father. They credited it. The prophets of old, although they were used by God, they really did not know God. I hope you know that. So they credited all kinds of things. And Jesus came as the image of the invisible God to correct our perception about God. And he's saying that God in his character gives good things to them that ask him that means when i ask god for something what do i expect good things notice the bible never says that he just gives you your desire alone he gives you good things that means you must travel to his realm to interpret good from his standpoint i need to correct this up front because the idea what may be good for you may not be God's idea of good. The same way a child will come and slap his father and say, give me the car key. That is the child's interpretation of good things. But the father knows that giving that child that key will end that child's life. So it is part of his fatherhood to deny that child and give him something else. Prayer that works now. Are we together? Abba Father, that when you come to God, number one, you must come to God understanding that He is the source of all things. Don't come to God as an option. <clears throat> the moment you approach God as an option, you are not approaching Abba Father. It's a mindset. It's not just to say our Father in terms of the linguistic pronunciation that come with this mindset that the man you are approaching is not somebody who was employed by another person to hear you he is the owner that means whatever god cannot give me no man can give me that is a revelation that should drive me in prayer lord i come to you and i'm asking you for this if god says no and anybody tells you yes that person is going to kill you because the owner you come to my kitchen and you see yam, plantain, and you say, give me, I say no. And you ask my security man, and the security man says yes. Are you wise to believe that that man will come to my kitchen and it is my house? I employ him. He's now taking my place illegally. That's a thief and a robber. They are the ones who enter through the window. You see that? When you approach God, approach him as touching his goodness when you approach god approach him as touching his fatherhood understand that his heart of compassion is ever before you that will take away the sense of bondage 
and the sense of fear. Many believers continue to approach God in fear, continue to approach God with a sense of bondage. And sometimes we men of God, in a bid to help people to be serious with God, we think that the only way to make people serious with God is to threaten them and to reveal God as an angry God who can strike you the moment he's angry. It is true that these dimensions are in God, but he has chosen that the dimension that you should approach in prayer is his fatherhood. Our Father. We cry, Abba Father. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. We cry, Abba Father. We cry, Abba Father. Hallowed I have seen, I've watched a number of children approach their fathers. And it's amazing that every father is also something else. I hope you know. The father is also a manager. He's a CEO. He's a doctor. But when the child comes, while we are queuing to see the doctor, the child is coming to see his father. So if you tell the, father, the child to join a queue, he says, no. I join the queue if I want to see a doctor. But now I'm coming to see my father and he can just run and come and embrace the father. Watch this. Watch this. You can't run and embrace the man like that because he's not your father. You see that? He's the one who will give you injection and prescribe a drug. But the child is coming to his father. Now watch this. It doesn't matter whether he steps on the father's toes. Remember, the father has an eternal commitment towards the child. That does not mean the child will be lawless. But there is a consolation that at his worst, he is still loved by his father. It's a revelation. Listen, believers, let me teach you this. This is the balanced perspective of both grace, revelation, and all of that. There are people who can never approach God properly. Do you know why? Because we have been given a mindset that all God is, is a warrior. Did the Bible not say there is a time for peace and there is a time once it is under the earth. God is not always fighting. He fights. Don't make that mistake. He's on a, he's a rider on a white horse, but he's not always on a horse. He can sit on the throne. Jesus was demonstrating the fatherhood of God when, remember these busy protocol guys who wanted to drive the people from seeing him and said, don't interrupt Jesus. He's preparing for a meeting. And Jesus said, no. No, I'm not only a savior, I'm a father. I remember I'm revealing the fatherhood of God. Let the little children, not let strangers, mm -mm, let their children, they are entitled to my attention. Let the little children come to me. He didn't say let the little children prepare and come to me. He said let them come to me. He said do not forbid them. The children are acting out something about the father and his children. Rather than driving them, learn. Learn. For for such is the kingdom of heaven. That means you must approach me this way. When we pray, pray in this manner. I am coming to my father. It doesn't matter what dream you said you saw and what God told you about me. It's all right, I've had you. My father. Abba, father. It doesn't matter what you said God revealed to you will happen to me tomorrow. Because of whatever you think. Thank God for your wonderful vision. But... I have, I know a way of sorting myself. He's Abba, my source, my sustainer, my preserver, my defender. Listen, in this ministry, come. If I see this gentleman outside, even if I'm passing, and he calls me and says I'm a member of this ministry, he has called on my fatherhood. If I see that he cannot pay his bike, even if he was wrong, I will not draw his ears outside. It will be stupid of a father. This is a, this is a home affair. So I will fake correct that thing for my namesake. Lest it be told that I mentored him wrongly. It has nothing to do with whether I love him or not. My reputation is at stake. So I will correct it first and say, meet me at home. When he comes home and say, next time, get your bike money before you go. So the awareness that I will correct him, but the awareness that my love overrides everything gives him confidence that even when he's wrong, he does not run away, he runs towards. 
please understand this. Listen, I don't know where we got this Jonah type revelation that every time we feel unworthy, we run away. Then when we think we are okay, we run towards. That's a devilish theology. Abba Father, my life changed when the understanding of God as my Father He's not only the king of glory. He's not only the maker of the heavens and the earth. You see that? I can call him different things and they are wonderful dimensions. But he says for effective prayer, know this. He is the final bus stop for judgment. The final bus stop for mercy. The final bus stop for everything. Abba, Father. When you pray, say our Father. He's not your father alone. Our, not your father alone. He's the father of all believers too. That means you don't act as if God, yes, God has a personal covenant with people. But sometimes, you know, especially we men of God, we can make it look as if I have a business with God that I can manipulate God into frustrating you. Abba, God is father. Fa our father, not my father. I go to my God and your God. My Father and your Father. He was first the only begotten Son. But when He resurrected, He became the first begotten. He had now brought us many sons into glory. Listen, this is very powerful. Because our approach many times in prayer, we don't know, oh God, um, well, if you don't hear me, you can go through Joshua Selman. Yes, there are dimensions where you can tap into a man's covenant. We've taught that. But the idea is not to reduce you to feel less. He is our father. You see my precious children here after Koinonia. I am their father. So there's none of their business what you think about them. Sometimes they may not dress well. Sometimes they may not look well. Once I am happy. Honestly, what you think makes no there's is none of their business. When you pray, pray in this manner. It didn't say just say our father. You can say our father, not have the mindset. It's not an enchantment, it's a revelation. The person I am approaching is Abba, he is the source of all things. I don't approach God like an option. You see why many believers don't don't they have a stone at the back of their house that stone was anointed and given to them by some kind of devilish covenant are we together they have another idol i know that most if you don't have it just keep quiet it doesn't mean other people don't have it it's amazing what africans bring together they put that stone they put all of those things then they add god to it and pray to everything and wait for whichever answers them and god says no you don't get that about me our father i was not molded they didn't breathe into me no you carry cement that was made by dangote and make an idol and make it strong using cement and pray to it you see how stupid we are and yet god says no when you come to me approach me in this way my father Look at Jesus. Jesus is standing by the grave of Lazarus. And for a few seconds, he forgets about the issue of death and resurrection. I thank thee, my father, because you always hear me. He said, I'm even embarrassed to look like I'm trying to push you. I'm only doing it so that they will understand what is going on. The love of God is a revelation that the saints must carry. The love and the fatherhood of God. Listen to me. God is not. Listen, I will say it again. There are many ways to know God. And one of it is through Jesus. Jesus manifested as the image of the invisible God. His primary ministry before his death and resurrection was to correct our perspective about God. That means whatever we thought God was, we look at Jesus for verification. 
and we never see one person destroyed in the ministry of Jesus. It was only the religious people that suffered. He only whipped them once and he whipped them out of compassion. The Bible said the zeal of the Lord consumed him, not wickedness. The zeal of the house of God. He said, you are turning my house to a den of robbers and it has necessitated this kind of action. Abba Father. He comes to the woman by the well and he starts a conversation with her. He looks at Zacchaeus. Look at the love of God. Zacchaeus is climbing a tree as a tax collector. Do you know the kind of humility that is? And he says, Zacchaeus, I've changed the crusade. You are worth my going to your house. Only you. Come down. If you were in Jesus' ministry, you would hate him. Because how can you cancel a crusade just to go and see a tax collector? One man. You are on your way going somewhere and a man climbs up and you see his compassion and you say, I cancel my program to attend to only you. Oh, Jesus, you are showing favoritism. He said, no, I'm honoring someone here who thinks he is far from me. I want to bring him near. Jesus. Every time they called upon the fatherhood of God, look at the compassion. Look at the way he approached them. Take away fear when you approach God. Listen, let me tell you this. He is the one who can forgive you. Running away is still in trouble. And if you are right, he's the one who can bless you. You see that? Everybody say, our father. Sit down, please. Let's continue. We have to rush. So the revelation of God as father is very powerful. The source of all things. The sustainer. And the Bible says, the major characteristic of fathers is that they are givers. It's in the Bible. That means if you are not a giver, you are not a father, even if you have children. He never said, if you who can give birth. <clears throat> God's idea of fatherhood is not procreation. God's idea of fatherhood is the ability to select and ensure that there is an advantage to the one you are giving to. He measures fatherhood first, not by the power and the ability to procreate. That means based on God's idea there are many men that have children but are not fathers they do not give a good destiny they do not give a good life a true father is a giver powerful every time i approach him whether i ask him for something or not did you know let me tell you this ministry has taught me a lot of fatherhood every time i see my people sincerely whether our children here or the workers here in the ministry the moment i see them I'm, I'm not even as concerned whether they are crying or they are laughing, whether they've sinned against me or done something wrong. In all honesty, my primary concern when I see them, I want to know they are doing well. By the time I can look at your face and know you have not eaten, I suspend whatever discussion we're having. Have you eaten? Of course, you may not have the courage to say no. And I should have the fatherhood enough to insist. You will not just say, well, uh, I'm not sure. And then say, okay, no problem. It's all right. It looks like you've eaten. You are not a father. You are like a father. You are a hypocrite. You are like a roaring lion. How Satan goes around. But he's not a lion. True fathers are givers. Gentlemen, this is a message for you already. We are doing prayer. So check your fatherhood. It's not by biological maturity. It is by the aptness, the ease to release, the ease to give. The ease to give. You watch children crying in front of bones. You don't even have the fatherhood to say, let me just drop 100 naira. You just laugh and say, yeah, boy, you like it? Boy, say, yes, sir. And, and it will be like a joke till you leave that child and go. You are not Abba. No, you are not a father. You are a grown-up adult, but you are not a father. Is God helping us? So he's saying even evil fathers are givers. So whether you are a good father or you are an evil father, at least be a giver. Powerful. You know I have met God by something that is in my hand while I leave him. Whether I go there to intercede, whether I go there to make requests, the fatherhood of God will not allow me to go out of his presence empty-handed. Nobody comes to my house and leaves empty-handed. It's true. Why will somebody come to my house and leave empty-handed? No. I will insist there must be a signature that is my house you came to. My house is not a graveyard. You come to my house, you should live with something. You claim to have been meeting God. 
but you are living with your hands empty. Abba, the giver. Abba, the giver of good things. Good things. I approached God and I said, Lord, this is my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And I approach him with the understanding that if God, the Father, gave freely his son, Jesus, what else will he not give me? Are we together? Number two. Thank you. So he says, our Father. Number two, who art in heaven. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6. Open our eyes, oh God. See, I truly pray for you from the depth of my heart that the spirit of revelation in a mighty way will come upon your life. Yeah. You see, let me tell you how to know the spirit of revelation is upon you. It is not in the scarceness of the information you are producing, but the ability to draw the mysteries of the kingdom out of stories, the ability to draw the methodologies of God out of anything. You know the spirit of revelation is upon you when the ways of God can come out of any scripture. Not just the ones you know. Any scripture. He shows you his ways. He shows you Christ revealed through any scripture. Who art in heaven? Let's discuss. Now look up please. It's a very powerful prayer. He's saying when you approach God, number one, approach him based on his fatherhood. Have we gotten that? Then number two, he says, who art in heaven? That means that who is in a realm that is not here. Listen carefully. He is here by his spirit, but bodily speaking, if I use that word, he is domiciled in a realm that is not earth. That immediately means approach God through faith. Your faith will have to come alive because he is not seen in this realm. Are we together? And that anything you cannot see, you do not need faith for again. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. Our Father who art in heaven, who art in a realm that is not earthly, who art in a dimension that may not be easily seen with my optical eyes, but you are real. I must approach you with that understanding. Hebrews chapter 6, please, and verse 6. He says, where's that? 11, sorry. Hebrews 11 verse 6. I meant to say, sorry. 11 and verse 6. Watch this. He says, But without faith, it is impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God, so he's still talking about prayer, must believe that he is, meaning he exists. I cannot see him, but I know he's real. And then his father, because he also gives, and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him my father who art in heaven i believe you although i cannot see you so that i don't feel stupid for praying you are standing alone and you believe you are not alone you need faith to believe that you are writing your prayer request and coming and throwing it before an altar from a sociologist standpoint he knows you are not fine while you are writing, oh God, be watching, I'm writing. I drop it before you and you are happy he's seen it. Doesn't make sense until you engage through faith. What is faith? Conviction about the reality of God and the integrity of his person. And the action that you take based on that conviction is called faith. Are we together? That the foundation of true faith is your conviction. The Bible says you must believe he is. Not everybody I believe will have the privilege and the opportunity to have visionary experiences. To see God glorified. Are we together? You do not need to see God either in the spirit or in a vision to believe him. No. He made faith available. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen he said for by it that faith is a connector so i know if i tell you come my dear if i tell you i want to give you one thousand naira 
If you say, where is it? You are not operating by faith. You cannot see the money, but you have to trust that I'm not lying to you. Are we together? And the Bible says this scripture was inspired by the Holy Ghost. The one who searches the mind of the Father to ensure that everything revealed is truth. So when God says he's going to lift you, you don't say, where is it? Where is the house? Show me, oh God, and I will believe. You have become like Thomas. He said, until I put my hand there. He said, Thomas, you have robbed yourself of the excellency of faith. Now, since this is what you want, go. he said, blessed is he. There is a level of empowerment that comes when you have not seen and yet believe. Believers are people who must learn to trust God even when they don't see him. I have a thousand naira to give you. Well, um, I, don't, I don't know if there is that money, but I believe you. The first question is, you have to look at me to find out whether I can afford a thousand naira. You see that? And then number two, if I can afford a thousand naira, whether or not I am a giver enough to give you. If you believe me and I lie to you, then it means I don't have integrity. But at least you did the believing. Listen, if you do not believe God, how are you going to pray for the sick? you're going to stand before someone on a wheelchair and he tells you there are angels there that there's a bam in Gilead no hospital gave you that bam you will stand in front of everybody and say Sam you are going to stand up from this wheelchair because God said so you don't have to hear a voice like prophecy says tell him to stand up no the most powerful state of the believer is when you act without seeing, without hearing, but believing. Not just when you are seeing. Not just when you are hearing. The man who has seen, if, I, if God opens my eyes and I'm seeing an angel now, with respect to that sight, I'm not standing by faith again. I'm seeing, it's there. I know. My conviction is tied to God, but strengthened by the presence of that angel. But I do not see, but I believe that the word of God says, are we together? That there are angels. Please listen. And so with that one now, as I minister to this person, this is faith. I can now tell Sam, stand up from that wheelchair. Now, I'm telling him to stand up. Remember that there is nothing physical. Everything there is physical. But the Bible is saying that all that we see is not all that there is. That there is a lot happening in the realm of the spirit. And it says that the person who is doing it is not in this realm. He has operations happening in this realm. But heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. So you have to believe. Many believers are scientific. Let me tell you this. If you cannot believe God for things unseen, you will never go far in life. There is no guarantee anywhere. Apostle, now that I came to Zaria, I thought God said I should come to Zaria. Even if you don't hear any voice, if you are convicted by the truth of scripture, that that location is a place that lifts you, you will stay here, God will back you and you will honor you. It's not about dreams and visions. It's about faith on the integrity of God's word. Visions and prophecies are inferior to the truth of scripture. Who art in heaven? Who art not in this realm? When you pray to me, I'm not in heaven. Of course, I'm in heaven seated with Christ, but I mean bodily speaking. I am here, so you can meet me. If I'm stretching my hand, you are seeing it, so you can collect. But where you cannot see and yet you still stretch your hand. Lord, I know you are a giver, so I stretch my hands in advance. Faith. And the angels are watching. This is, listen. This is what surprises the angels. Because the angels don't walk by faith. Are you seeing that? So when they see believers in the earth who do not have the advantage of those openings and yet they trust God. Imagine how the angels felt when these guys entered the fire. They said, you believe God that far? Fire is about to roast you. And he said, no. I know whom I have believed. Listen. Our faithless generation is why God cannot use mighty people. Someone wants to start a ministry and is waiting for an uncle who will vow to be the sponsor. Um, I, will, I will give you, I will give you two million to wax your album. In the economy of God, you will die and not move forward. There are times you have to stand. The signs don't go before. They follow. 
you believe first. That's why the Bible says, when Jesus comes to the earth, will he find faith? Faith, what in heaven? The fact that he's in heaven does not mean he's dead. So when you approach him, not only is he a giver, he resides in a realm that is not optical. He resides in a realm that cannot be felt easily with your sensory perceptions. That means he's giving you an added information because the devil is the master of the sense realm. So when you begin to pray, he says, are you feeling like God is moving? He says, I'm feeling dry. God never told you to believe he's answering prayer because you are feeling anything. Uh -uh. This is the confidence that we have. This is scripture I'm teaching you. All these feelings have destroyed people. You may be at your most powerful state in the spirit, but because you didn't feel anything, you just say, I don't feel like praying for the sick. If, if that thing comes, I have a way of feeling. You walk that way, the devil will destroy you. The day there is nothing on you, you will feel as if you are on top of the world till your results show nothing is on you. Be careful with feelings. Feelings have destroyed people's lives. The word of God must become your new eyes. Your new sensory perceptions. How do I know God is going to lift me? I had a dream yesterday. No, sir. No, sir. My confidence is in the word. All other experiences only support. They are not the basis. Why do I think I'll excel in ministry? People have been telling me here and there I'm very good. You will fail so woefully. Your basis of confidence in this kingdom is the word of God. Anything that is not founded on the integrity of scripture, you are already at a risk. It will not look like it until life destroys you. There are many people moving around their destiny with all kinds of dreams and visions. Dreams and visions are wonderful, but no vision and no dream sustains the power to bring itself to life. He upholds all things by the word of his power. I'm teaching you sound, effective prayer strategies. Not this shadow boxing believers continue to do. That's why there's no result. Our God will touch people here and it's like superstition. And you are waiting. God will move. The power of God will move now. And those stupid things that believers do. No, God is not an idiot. He has taught us a good way of manifesting so that people will know we are betting the reality of God. God is not a magician. We believe in oil. Nothing wrong with it. We believe in wafers and wine. Are we together? Because these are physical things we see. We believe in water. We believe in handkerchief. Those things are only extensions. It is faith in the Son of God. This simple thing, who art in heaven, is why many ministers cannot rise. That's why they harass people. Oh, Sam, you're a millionaire. Can you wait behind in my office? Pastor Femi, Kenny, promise you are all millionaires. Wait, uh, can God use you? Is that what he told you? Is that what he told you? Did he tell you those are your financiers? Hey, but you see, apostle, the, the, the way ministry, wisdom is profitable. No, 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 no. That's fear. Who are in heaven? So as I approach God, you may see me moving around alone and praying outside. Make no mistakes, I'm not alone. I may be moving around. Now, there's a mistake that many people make. They say, why are you moving around and shouting? God is an intelligent God. Sit down, see if you are talking to him. No, 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 no. Just moving around and praying and shouting does not mean God is not hearing you. Usually those things are licensed for laziness. When people find out that they do not have the grace and the energy, they look for intelligent ways to justify their cold and lukewarm prayer life. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, not a quiet voice. Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabatanai. Jesus praying to his father with a loud voice. So he, he was not disbelieving his father. He was praying. When you pray loud, it's not unbelief. Jesus himself prayed with a loud voice. It's not every time he went to the grave and said, Father, thank you because you hear me. Uh -uh. 
there were times that he prayed even the, his tears were like drops of blood yet he was praying to the father is God helping us who art in heaven please sit down let's hurry up we must have part 3 for this series because in part 3 I will teach you now the dynamics these ones were just observing the rules of engagement so that you don't just carelessly approach prayer and say God why are you not answering me you see the way we pray believers many believers pray and their prayers are full of wise sayings they just say all kinds of things many of those things believers say are not scriptural teach us to pray number three hallowed be thy name what does it mean to hallow his name the word hallow there talks of reverence the word hallow there talks of honor that means do not be confused god is father it is true but then be careful boldness is not pride and dishonor you must still maintain that fortitude that although he is your father he is god hallowed be your name hallowed be your name i honor your office i honor your position i do not take you for granted it was not by my righteousness and by my qualification that i have access to you now that you have given me access i will not abuse it hallowed be your name first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 very powerful scripture let's hurry up first samuel chapter 2 and verse 30 wherefore the lord god of israel said i said indeed that my house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever but now the lord said be it far from me listen he said for them that honor me i will honor and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed this is god speaking so god is saying just because i am father there should be a place of preserving honor at the back of your mind. Boldness is not foolishness. Hear what the Bible says. And this is where many believers get it wrong. Please give us Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. We are studying scripture. The Bible says to come before him with boldness. Are we together? Let us therefore come boldly, not arrogantly. Boldness is not arrogance. Boldness is not pride. Boldness is not dishonor. Are we together? Yes. Boldness. I recognize, oh God, that you are my father. You have stooped so low, but I will never take you for granted. You are father, but you are God. Charismatics and Pentecostals have messed up in this area. Just because we have an understanding of the fatherhood of God, you see the way people talk to God and act and you are wondering you say you see this this variety of dishonor hallowed be your name notice that every time you would see once and again Jesus would remind them look at how Jesus hallowed the name of his father I can of myself do nothing after being so famous and doing great things no Jesus paid attention to the father he always made people know that he was under authority. He continued to project the fatherhood of God. Hallowed be your name. This is a principle that you have to learn. Because you see, let me tell you this. In a true father-son relationship, come my friend, watch this. The proof of genuine love between a father and a son is that when you see two of them, you should not know who is father and who is son. A wise son, now every once and again, has the responsibility to intentionally make men see the difference. Are you seeing that now? This is what Jesus did in his earth work. My earthly father is alive. And I love, please help that lady. Now watch this, please look up. My earthly father is alive. And honestly... It's possible they are even listening now. My earthly father has profound respect for me. Profound respect for me. 
my father will not pick his call and his phone and call me until he sends a text and say are you free sir my father that gave birth to me now if i'm a stupid son one day i will look at him and say um, this this careless thing that these young people in our generation do don't know the difference between father and son popsy how are you you see those those kinds of indiscipline attitudes no. no matter what happens my father remains my father i can change the future but i cannot change history father are we together there are times that when you see me and god you think we drink tea together this guy can just joke and god will honor him ah this man and holy spirit they are joking Oh dear, you ask him. There are times I know the difference. My knees tell the difference. My clothes on the ground tell the difference. Yes. Everybody who recognized the difference between God as Father and God as God, that revelation, that hallow, it's very powerful. They commanded dimensions of his attention. Are we together? Although Jesus being God, when he got to heaven, he didn't say shift, let me sit down. He waited until he was coronated. The Lord said to my Lord, sit down. Until then he was standing. Yet co-equal. Sit down. Are we together? I remember a few years ago, one very foolish boy came around to see me and he said, Apostle, they say you are so nice, you are so humble, and he was misbehaving. I told him, I said, please walk out of my house. Humility is not stupidity. You, don't, you, are, not, you are not a wise person. Go and learn wisdom. See, no matter how free you become with God, no matter how free you become with greatness, never forget who you are talking to never forget who you are relating with that's why every once and again when men forget god will do something that will remind them i am god from beginning to the end there's no place for argument i am a god believers need to be told this listen that's why and if he loves you, he will not descend on you. He will descend on an enemy in a way and manner that just makes you say, ah, this is the one I'm relating with. And you come back. He said, no, you are still mine. I see it happen even with me. There are times when miracle service is done, people are, or maybe people are on the queue. And the other person is hoping to jump and hug me. And the person before him, as soon as I touch that person, the person is flying up and down. You see the person just... The next person on the queue now behaves and says, Good afternoon. I said, No, we were to hug now. What suddenly? Let me teach you something. Every time you humble yourself and reach out to people, discern whether they are on or changes. If it drops as they come close, stop there. Never give people access. Beyond their level of communicating honor is dangerous. They will destroy you, destroy your system, destroy everything. My children here can do things for me that many of you cannot do. They can command me to bring my ears. Bring your ears and hear. And I'll just bend quietly. And they will now say, I want puff puff or I want something. I would have looked and said, can you imagine this? Do you know who is standing before you? While you are standing, oh God, finally I'm going to see Apostle. <laughs> you know, bend your ears, Apostle. Go and, I need chin chin or puff puff. I, I just, okay, quietly go and meet the welfare HOD to sort you out. That's Father. But I can guarantee you, as those children grow, one day, if they do something that is not nice, even if it's with two fingers, you can spank them. One you i'm still father are we together notice people who don't spank children a bit when they cry they get used to it because they know i can cry my way out one day you tell mm, i'm your father but i'm a leader the 
God of heaven. Respect him. Hallow be your name. You know, when you see a man of God moving strongly under the anointing, it looks like he's commanding God. Oh, the power of God will touch this and this one is flying. The power of God will do this. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it looks like this man has pushed God from the throne. Oh God, where are you? This man is the one sitting on the throne based on everything. A wise man, while you are enjoying the wow factor, remember you are moving. It's like you are moving at the edge of a seat. A wise person will quickly just say, um, ladies and gentlemen, I, let me just remind you again that there is one who is mightier than I. The moment you just balance that equation, you frustrate the devil. I was on my way hoping he would continue like that. Now he's acknowledged God. Because in all your ways, when you acknowledge him, he will direct you. That means there is always progress. Let me tell you this. Fame looks sweet. It is very, very powerful to let men know you are the final bus stop of everything. The God of Apostle Joshua Selman, the God of Koinonia, you enjoy it when people are sitting there and people are kneeling down. Oh, daddy, you know, those things, those things look powerful until you forget God. God does not punish you. He steps out just like your will wanted. And you will see what it means to be without God. Have you seen a dog wanting to get a bone, but someone is standing there? He can wait for two hours, hoping that guy will move. That's how the devil is. Your immunity is not in any strength of yours. It is in your partnership with God. Never forget that. Hallowed be your name. Parush Number four, are we making progress? Let's see where we can stop. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is teaching, pray in this manner. Watch this. That you approach prayer, that a believer who wants to approach prayer in a way and manner that he will get answers must be one who the entire scope of his prayer is hinged on seeing the will and the purposes of God coming to pass. Get my teaching for your glory. Please get it. Everyone get it. Write it and you can collect it from the media. It's free after service for your glory. Very powerful teaching. It is one big secret to my life. You know, I told you that the Lord told me years ago that son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Remember, you already know that your father is a giver. So you don't act as if he does not want to give. Thy kingdom, I prioritize what you want. It is not just what I want. I'm not using you just to get needs. I'm here to promote your interest is bigger than what I want. Find out in scripture. Those who put themselves under every kind of inconvenience to advance his kingdom, to see that his interest was promoted, notice their lives. He made a wonder out of their lives. Esther was not just in the palace to enjoy. When she was there, she would have remained there. They would kill the Jews and eventually kill her, but she remembered. I'm here to promote something. I'm the only woman who has that kind of access to the king. I will use my access for his glory. Eventually, Esther is lifted. Mordecai is lifted. Her man dies. The Lord changes. Christ is glorified. Herein lies the destruction that comes with our selfish prayer. This is how an average believer prays. Look up, please. When it's as if we are entering a room, we pray two or five minutes tongues very quickly to just warm the atmosphere. Lord, I thank you. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, as if we are rapping. Uh, you are the rose of Sharon. You are the, if not you that is lifting me. And the Holy Ghost is watching you. And angels are watching you. They are seeing the selfishness. Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. It's, you are just passing the gates, passing the courts, moving around. And then, um, God, well done that I finished. Oh God. 
you are, this is not the first time I'm saying this thing to you. It's not like you have forgotten, but I'm, I'm, I'm here again. Eh? You think you are praying. No. That's a lamentation. That's not prayer. Jesus is still... Remember, the disciples tried this thing, this method. It didn't work. That's why they say, teach us to pray. We are tired of wasting our time. See, God is moved by the feelings of your pain. He's touched, but only his word compels action. Just because God is touched does not mean he will move. He does not move by emotions. He moves at the impulse of his word. I have learned in my life the power of putting the kingdom above you. Above your needs. Ladies and gentlemen, I show you the way of true power in the kingdom. I show you the way to receive things you did not pray for. It's been my life. You can ask God. I'm telling you sincerely, and it's not because of what God has done in my life today. Less than 25% of my prayer is for me. Ah, Apostle, you have food on your table. No, it's not something I started today. It's been there like that. This need-driven prayer, you will see a believer spending six hours praying. And at the end of it, you say, Kai, you are a prayer warrior. Ask him, what were you doing for the six hours? If he tells you he was praying in tongues, clap for him. Because he has done well. But most times he will tell you that six hours. Praise and worship took ten minutes or so. Are we together? Maybe listening to a tape for twenty-five minutes that you off in anger. Because he was not saying what you wanted to hear. Are we together? And the remaining part of that prayer is just a pouring out of lust and selfishness. Lord, the other day, look at this girl, my junior. She's now married. I'm, I'm saying this. You are the only one I can talk to. Like, yes, he's Abba, but he's not stupid. Remember, we say, hallow his name. Is this how many of us pray? So, don't just say, I prayed and things are not working. What did you do? The disciples said, teach us to pray. All my younger ones are working. God, what is this? Yeah? The other day, look at the person I taught in primary school. I can't believe that it was this guy that did a transfer of 10,000. Now, how do you expect God to answer that prayer? Be God yourself. And imagine a prayer warrior called you praying to God. Mark that script. But imagine a believer with so much burden and pain. And yet he comes and says, Lord, I know that I have my needs but I want you to know that your interest is before me. And you mean it. You know anything you say, heaven looks at your heart before they mark the script. You can talk grammar with your mouth and they look. This, this guy is a liar. He's just talking stories. It's just because he's in a prayer group and there are many people. That's not the truth in his heart. Your kingdom reign. Your kingdom reign. Above all. Above all, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. Above all, above all. In my life, in my life, Lord, your kingdom reigns. Kingdom reign in my heart, in my life. Lord, your kingdom reign. 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 Above all. me my brothers and my sisters it's a powerful strategy that you approach God Lord I'm praying for koinonia I have needs but I suspend it to pray Lord bring souls Lord change lives people are on their way traveling to come now pray and the devil will be saying keep praying there 
Is God in a hurry? Does God have opening hours and closing hours? What is the rush for? It is through faith to leave your need and stand. Let me tell you how to get a rich man's attention. Find where his eyes is looking and go there. If a rich man is thirsty, you get his attention by going where water is to bring water. You don't stand and say, oh God, tend to me. He's busy. That approach is not the best analogy, but I'm telling you this. You want to get God's attention. Look for where his eyes and his heart is. Oh, I'm, lift, I'm lifting people in this ministry. Lord, let me be part of those who pray this into. I'm praying. And the devil is saying, are you aware that your mother is in the hospital? Are you aware that she's about to die? And while you are praying, Lord, I'm praying, let lives change. Thank you, oh God. They are being saved. I decree and declare. Friday's meeting is another encounter. Lord, as your people sit under this atmosphere, their lives are changing. And while the angels are wandering, this man has an option. This is what Solomon did that touched God. He said, Solomon, I give you a free check. And Solomon said, Lord, forget about my needs. I know that you want your people led. I am young. Give me an understanding heart so that I can lead your people. And God says, you've got it. The pattern was honored. Because you did not ask for the life of your enemy or for money and all of this. I will give you wisdom and an understanding heart like no other king. I said, but with it, I will give you riches. I will give you wealth. I will give you honor. You remind God about yourself when you forget about yourself. Selfish driven prayer. I'm not saying you don't bring petitions. Don't get me wrong. You can take out time, but many of us, I can tell the truth sincerely between you and God. This whole year, I'm not sure you have prayed for any other person aside from yourself. It's always me. It tells, even when you come to stand for your family for prayer. What I, I'm not putting you under pressure. Uh, Apostle, well, forget uh, my mother. How is she? Well, her leg has started improving. Just leave her, but this thing now is me. When it is all about you, you would not command the attention of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will, your intent be enforced. I show you the secret of very great men. They decrease and his purpose is increased through them. And while that is happening, requests you are not raising, God is answering. Listen, the Shunammite woman forgot about the issue of her barrenness. And started paying attention to the prophet. Every time prophet Elisha will be passing. And they said, we discern this is a holy man of God. In other words, he's always passing to execute the will of God. I know I'm barren. But forget about my barrenness. Let us find a way and build him a room. Let us put books. Let us put light. And when the prophet came and enjoyed the prophet by himself, he started telling Gehazi, he said, what can we do for this woman? In other words, it is not consistent with God's character to go all the way and then he forgets about you. You cannot outgive God. So when you forget about yourself, you make God to remember you. And he said, God, don't leave me. He said, he told the woman, listen, the, the woman told the prophet, he said, well, I dwell among, he said, the prophet said, should I talk to the governor for you? He said, I dwell among my own people. And Gehazi just said, sir, this woman is barren. He said, that's it. Imagine if every time she was passing and they put a chariot to stop Elisha and say, you are a prophet. Are you not, can't you see that your neighbor here is barren? The prophet will curse her and say, you better clear, you are, you are an interruption to my assignment. This I have learned about God. My heart is only concerned about what brings him glory.
father knows you have need of these things listen let me tell you try this thing and do it with revelation and you will wonder at the hand of God God give me 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 and heaven is saying you are not profitable your prayer is not profiting the kingdom at all dissipating energy for hours Lord give me give me power give me bread give me tea give me this give me fame let me outshine and while you are praying that all God is seeing is flesh self so it is not just that you are praying is God's heart a priority in your prayer Apostle, I'm not an intercessor. You see it? It's not for intercessors. It's a pattern. In this manner, pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. You think God does not know you have needs? No. There are times you can dedicate honestly to pray for yourself. Read the Bible and find out how many times Jesus prayed for himself. Read your Bible. From Mark chapter 4, when he started praying in the wilderness, read it up until the time he went to heaven. How many times did he pray? Look at the prayer of Jesus in John 17. Father, the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son will glorify him. This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the one and true God. I pray for them, not that they will live, but that you will keep them. All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost, except the son of perdition, that scripture may be fulfilled. That they may know, this, he is praying for them. And it's a shame, let me tell you this, I, I don't mean, I'm not trying to speak bad. But if you are a man of God here, or you have any kind of spiritual responsibility, and you don't cry before God over your congregation, over your people, you will never have testimonies in that church. Keep prophesying in the open and don't pray in the secret. You will be surprised to see. It's the reason why many churches have only one, two, three people testified. Because the truth is the men of God don't pray for the people. The true, the part of the apostolic ministry of Paul, Ephesians, for this cause, I, Paul, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He may grant unto you, not to me, thy kingdom come. Please reorder your life this night. Reorder your plan this night. Hear what I'm telling you. I show you the way that makes you successful. Reorder your life. Lord, you have put me a priest as this, in this family. Things are not going well in my family. I know that I have needs, but for now, oh God, I'm dedicating these two days and I'm not mentioning anything about myself. It is about my father's salvation. It's about my mother's healing. It's about my sister's barrenness issue. Uh, that is a priesthood ministry. Of course, I know why you are spending three hours. Is it not because you are praying for yourself? When you are praying for others, five minutes is all right. Lord bless them. Just give them what money can buy and what money cannot buy. In Jesus' name. Is that prayer? Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. On Fridays like this, my mind is just thinking koinonia. 
I'm just thinking, my, my entire, my mood, everything is as if I'm not feeling fine. The few times that I travel and I'm not here on Friday, you ask the people that travel with me. Once it's Friday or Sunday, whenever Koinonia is holding and I'm not around, once it's 5.30 towards 6, it's as if my, my mood just changes. I'm not, I don't, they, they quietly leave me alone. They, they have their way. They, they, everybody just leave me alone and just leaves me and my God there to just sort ourselves. I can't even lie down to sleep. That's the most painful part. I remember the time I missed miracle service here. They brought me the video and I think it was Ben God that was praying or so. When I had it, I said, off that thing, please quickly, take it away from me. I sat down. I felt bad that night. I didn't know. It was as if I was going to die. That's the heart of a shepherd. Some of you would think and say, ah, who knows? Maybe somebody's first foot now was going they were going to give me line up and give me first food after service and god is saying look at the kind of shepherd who wants increase look at the kind of shepherd who wants extraordinary fruitfulness you are not thinking whether the people are blessed you are already thinking this person's first food his salary when god does not bring increase ask questions what is the motive behind it God sees my heart. I've told God many times, if it means me failing so that you will succeed, it's still a good bargain with God. I've prayed and cried to him that much. There is almost nothing in my life, sincerely speaking, that I seek for myself. If I ever seek anything for myself, I can show you how it connects to God and his glory. I want you to check your desires. Check the content of your prayer. Huh? How does your prayer route to birthing the purposes of God? Lord, give me a husband. Give me a wife. No problem. Why? How, what do you mean why? Am I a small child? Are you blind? And God says, you see what we are saying now? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Oh God, give me. Come divine. Give me a child. Why? So that you will have a prophet. I've been sensing in the spirit and I read that there are prophets who will move in this season. Lord, I donate my womb and God says, you are talking to me now. You are talking to me now. I see your pregnancy can now become a ministry if it will birth the purposes of God. See, a ministry is not just standing on the pulpit. It is whatever comes out of you that can bet his purposes. Lord, give me anointing. Why? Why do you want the anointing? I've, I've gone through failure in my life. Oh God, you know my background. And God says, that's not enough reason. Lord, I'm watching people. I saw the other day, this family, they were believers. They became non-believers simply because the power of God could not be demonstrated in that family. Lord, can you make me a bridge between someone's going to hell and his conversion? I donate myself and God says, you are talking to me now. You are ready for real fire from heaven. After this manner, pray. Prayer warriors, hear me. Most people do not pray correctly. They pray voluminously. They pray extensively. But the content of their prayer reduce it from the eyes of God's will. Very small, very small portion of it is kingdom. Let me tell you, if everything God gives you he sees that his kingdom will be represented there. I tell you sincerely, you will get more things without praying. All this job that many of you want. You see, telling God, if you give me a job, I'll give you the first fruit. That's, that's nonsense. That's not, that's not, God is not looking for first fruit. What will you do with the other fruits? God is looking for everything. Not all your money. That's not what I'm saying. Your life, Lord, in this office, you need an ambassador. I'm, I'm available. Lord, as you are searching for ambassadors, I'm available. And God says, are you? Fine. And you will see your CV that you submitted since 2014. Someone will wake up in the night to go and dust it. 
This I know about God. Align your heart to God's purposes and watch the wonder working power of answered prayer. God will shake systems and make sure that he comes to you. It is why covenants are powerful because you have now bound yourself. God knows that human beings vacillate. So when they come under covenant, it's an oath. That means they are aware of the consequence and yet they bound themselves. It's a token of seriousness. So God honors it. Hallelujah. Let me touch one more. Let's pray in the spirit one minute. Just one minute. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. continue. Verse 11. Verse 11, please. Let's read together. One, two, read. Give us this day our daily bread. Notice the progression. Now that my life and all about me is for you, as a subset of the provisions that will allow me to focus on your kingdom coming, it will be difficult for me to focus on the matters of your kingdom, O oh God, when certain constraints are there. So on account of my desire and my insistence to see your kingdom come, give me this day my daily bread. Are you seeing it now? You don't demand daily bread in isolation. It is part of the entire program that can allow his kingdom come. Kai, this is powerful. Notice that when it comes to God's kingdom, he doesn't want to even give you monthly. He wants to give you daily. Remember, you are asking for monthly. And God is saying, I am this passionate about making you comfortable to serve my purposes. I decide to make my benevolence daily so that there is no excuse. Give us this day, not our bread. Give us this day according to your ordinance. You say that every 24 hours there is an allocation. What is today's allocation? Give it to me. And God is saying, You on legal right, you can place help those outside. You can place a demand and say, Lord, I am here. Give me this admission because I have made up my mind to do this. Give me this, give me that. Send me prosperity. Open up doors for me. Lord, I'm unable. I have a heart for your people. But I cannot give. The reason why I cannot give is because the means is not there. And God says, I will not even do monthly with you. Let's go daily. I know many people never believe that there is something called daily bread. Notice, not daily flour. Bread is processed flour already. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are times that God gives you seed. There are times God gives you flour. But there are times because the king's business requires haste. He will make the bread and give you. It's called prepared blessings. So don't be angry when God gives you an intelligence to attract business people and gives another person a house, daily bread. That's bread already. A house that is built. Because God calculates and says, if this guy starts a building project, for the next three years, it may distract him. And it's at a strategic point. Bread. 
Was it not in heaven that bread that was made already from the oven of heaven? This is not a parable. Real bread came to the earth. It's not a parable. It's a parable. The Bible said there was a certain day. Real bread came. The Bible calls it angel's bread. Manna from heaven. And they ate it. Prepared blessing. When God says it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness, don't just expect flower or expect him to bless what you plant. You can step into prepared blessings. See, prepared blessings, you always hear me say, it is a time redemption system. It is not everything you must build by yourself. God can build certain things and give you. Is the Lord speaking to us tonight? As someone can come and say, Man of God, this is what I will be doing. You don't have any business. You don't have any investment. But the Lord spoke to me that every month for the rest of your life, one million is coming from me to you until I die or until Jesus comes. Now, it's not a license to be lazy, but that's prepared blessings. So when you say, God, give us our daily bread, he said, what did you do that you are saying I should give you daily bread? Daily bread is for those who will stand to see that his will be done. If you are not ready, go and look for oven, go and look for the farm, go and look for the seed, go and look for the baker, look for the yeast, make your bread. But when you say, oh God, more than just these things, you see my heart. Sky. God. You see God. See, this is why you hear the testimonies of some people and it will annoy you. You'll be like, what is all this one? Someone is saving 100, 100,000 every month. And I'm not saying that is wrong. You want to buy a car. How much? 5.2. Thank God. You are saving 100, 100,000 every month. But another person says, Lord, whether it's the car or it's me, everything belongs to you. You know this. And someone will just come and say, I'm leaving this country. I bought this car, six million. What do you have? He says, I have one. He says, just name it. Did you buy the car? How much is the duty of that car? Prepared blessings. If you ever desire prosperity in isolation to God's purposes, you are already in the value of good things, it is that they give us the allowance to serve him. See, this is the foundation and I'm glad tomorrow is a workers meeting, a workers retreat and all of that. We'll take it from there. Our retreat has started this night. It's very important. Listen, I continue to teach everybody who belongs to this ministry and connected to this family, this is the core of our ideology. That everything we ever press for it is to be able to give us the allowance to serve the purposes of the kingdom. So when you see us teach on wealth and abundance or the anointing or speed, none of these things are taught in isolation. They are useless when they are in isolation. They are only taught with respect to the role they play. When we hate poverty and hate demons and cast them out, whether through teaching or deliverance or whatever, the reason is because we have discerned how they interrupt God's agenda. So if I cause poverty from your life, it's not just because poverty is bad. It's because it, I have discerned that it has an effect. The impedance that it provides in your making spiritual progress is why we cause it. I don't care what stands your way. If it will not allow you to serve God and not allow you to advance, it deserves the judgment of God. Are we together? Why do we minister speed? Why do we pray for favor? None of these things are valuable themselves in isolation. But once your heart is stayed on birthing his purposes, then you can stand with confidence and say, give me this day. There is an allocation for today. There is. There is. There is an allocation for today. 
when Jesus finished his crusade, three days, the people were hungry. If he sent them like that, something will be wrong about his representing God. And he said, don't send them that way. Feed them. The people said, where are we going to feed them? And they brought the young lad, Andrew, brought a young lad with five loaves and two fish. Jesus blessed it and said, let me show you how the economy of heaven works. And they distributed it. Everybody ate. Why did they eat? Because they attended the crusade. Not because they were roaming around the road. The only people who received that miracle were those who were around that crusade ground. If you were not in that crusade ground, go to your bakery. See, there is a yoke that is given to non-kingdom people. That yoke should not be in your life. Your passion for God should exempt you. Please believe what I'm telling you. I will never allow my life whether financially or otherwise, to subscribe to the burden, to be in the similitude of the burden of a man who does not carry the program of God. Our experience should not be the same. Are we together? Oh dear, our time is gone. I want to close early today because we have our retreat. Let's do one. Give us our daily bread. God is a giver and the bread is daily. Don't forget. Daily is not a parable. Daily is daily. If I do not experience favor after 24 hours, I will go for a retreat. Now, our lives are in levels. But I'm saying this is where you press into. It's true. There are times if I experience favor, maybe once, twice a year, the name of the Lord be praised. But as I've grown to know God and I've seen the excellency that comes with bearing his name, I have seen that there is a provision for my daily bread. There's nothing the devil can do about it. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Next verse. Let's look at verse 12. Maybe we'll stop there. Ah, this is a good one. Forgive us our sins or debt as we forgive our debtors. Now he's teaching how to pray. <laughs> Let me teach you something here that is very powerful. Number one, this has nothing to do with sin or debt. You see, when you study scripture, you have to trust the spirit of revelation to open truth for you. What is the revelation behind this? Forgive us our debts or as our sins as we forgive our debtors. Let me tell you this. Number one, it means all men are human. It's a revelation that when you approach God in prayer, listen very carefully, that in your petition, something should happen to you. There is a knowledge about God you should know that God knows. Your prayer is not necessarily answered because of the flawlessness and the accuracy of your compliance. That there is a provision in God's dealing with you. He knows you are human. And that that same revelation is something you must carry as you approach men. Watch this. All men are human. All men fail. All men grow weary. The revelation behind this statement is to maintain an allowance for the humanity of men. In your dealing with the subject of prayer, be, I'm, I know why I'm saying this because many religious people say, ah, forgive us our sins. Ah, that's minus me. Let me tell you, it's not, I know you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The idea here is not sin or death. The idea is the fact that whoever can come under the influence of this must be human. Only God is immune from this. Are you getting the idea? And so he's saying that when God is dealing with you, he has left provision for your humanity. He knows you are frail. Psalms 100 and verse 3. When God opened my eyes to this scripture, it blessed me in no small way. Psalms 100 and verse 3. Read with me. One, two, read. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Uh -huh. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people 
and the sheep of his pasture. The sheep of his pasture. He knows. Oh, I'm sorry. Psalms 103. 103. 103. That's, that's the scripture for another. Psalms 103, 13 and 14. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healed all thy disease? Are we together? Verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. 14. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. This is God. He knows that, look, by and large, man is dust. Dust. That's why sometimes you can be ans asking something and God already knows what you really wanted to ask. He knows that what you are asking and the foolish way you are, you are, you are carrying is not your, you are weak as a man. So he bypasses what your mouth is saying and answers what your heart is really praying. This is a God of heaven. You can pray and say, Oh God, help me and kill my husband. And God knows that you don't mean to kill your husband. It's just that you are angry. Your husband has done something. In your heart, you are saying, I love this man. Why does he continue to hurt me? And your heart is really saying, God, change him for me. That's the one God answers. The, oh God, kill my husband. God just allows you. Or, Lord, if I don't give you this tithe by tomorrow, 12 o'clock, let me die. God knows. You know, most, most of us have prayed those kinds of unbelieving prayers. And as soon as the money came, you forgot. Till 12 midnight. And you are still alive. <laughs> Maintain allowance for the humanity of men. It is, it is something you receive in the place of prayer and is a mindset that you have as you approach prayer. It is not just about forgiveness of sins. Uh -uh. The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. That means the Holy Spirit is not in you. Are we together now? So he's not necessarily talking about sin as it were. He's talking about the fact that men are frail. Let me tell you this. It's a powerful revelation. Matthew chapter 18. You will read something that will bless you now. Matthew 18. A long reading but will be very fast. Starting from 21. Matthew 18, 21. Look up, please. I'm reading. Just write it and look. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? So he's talking about letting go. Are we together? Verse what now? 22. Jesus said to him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. 23. Therefore, now watch this. Jesus is about to explain. Every time you don't understand what Jesus is saying, whether you ask him or not, he will go ahead to use a parable and guide you so that he doesn't leave you in confusion. Are we together? Yes. He said, therefore, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a certain king. Look up, please. Which would take account of his servants. 24. Read on, please. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents an offender. He's owing him. Are we together? Verse 25. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold. You know, in ancient times, they, they would sell like slave market. They would sell the man, sell the children, sell everything. The Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. 26. Watch this. The servant fell down and worshipped him saying lord have patience with me i will pay thee all the master knew that he's just talking because of pressure he didn't have the power to do it are you seeing now forgive us our sins it's a revelation it's more than the issue of sin and death next verse then the lord of that servant was what moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him that means he saw that even that talk he's talking, he doesn't have the power to honor it. Next verse. But the same servant, uh -huh, the same servant went out and found one of his 
he was passing the street and just saw someone passing too and remembered that that person owes him a hundred pence and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat you see that come this is it he took him by the throat are we together saying pay me thou that owest look at look at this man now next verse and his fellow servant fell down the same way are you seeing now you went to god in prayer you know what he did now is your turn he fell down and besought him saying have patience with me same words and i will pay thee all let's look at what this other man did and he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt 31 so when his fellow servants saw what he had done they were very sorry and came and told their lord all that was done 32 then his lord after that he had called him said unto him O oh, thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all thy debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion? So it's about compassion, much more than forgiveness. A state of compassion, even as I've had pity on you, is a revelation. That when you approach God, know this about God. Are we together? that God has kept a dimension of his compassion knowing you are human knowing you are frail and he's saying even from that place of prayer carry that template as you relate with people Koinonia is quiet now this one has touched you a bit you know all the other part was God you demanding, receiving this one now demands that there is a reciprocity from you you are just thinking about somebody right now ah, somebody that i will jack him like this man could you be that person show me compassion oh god i will never forgive you from the uh, how they say it over over my, my till i die and god is watching what you are doing see you will never be able to walk in the world of men till you keep an allowance for the frailty and the weakness of men men are weak men are frail sometimes they would disappoint you when there is an interest to protect but they are men as a pastor as a man of god if you don't know this you'll be in trouble sam promised me that you will buy a car for me by march he even wrote it he called it a vow. What is today's date? Today is September. I'm just joking as an example. And Sam has not brought the car. And Sam has the boldness to sit in front when I'm preaching. And I say, lift up your hands to receive the prophecy. And he will even kneel down and lift up his hand. In my mind, I'm already saying, minus you. My grace will not work for you again. I will not waste. And not, you are an unprofitable compassion there is no such thing like we don't have this in our family what family are you talking about all these excuses that people give say apostle we are not like that in our family once we 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 are warriors we fight to the finish then you should know what it means to be a believer see truly as a person i have Hardly get disappointed in men because the provision has been left already. You see that? Apostle, let me get a job. You know, I get a job. This water is water bottle that they will start putting in there. You are now a director. You see, let me teach you something ministers pastors hear me all these promises that you carry from members members promise me this lift up your eyes to the heavens and leave men home they will frustrate you i will pay rent for you for one month as my seed to your ministry by month two 
to say i've changed my mind you know i didn't know that the the leaders will come back into power i was expecting that you see human beings we take your eyes away from men and look up to jesus christ alone the son of the living god are we together it's very very important do you have compassion can you forgive and more than forgiveness there are some of you if you are angry it's until God gives you a revelation of maybe hellfire or directly tell you help this person it's a bad spirit it's a wicked spirit that over my dead body talk be careful be careful there are husbands who cannot forgive their wives they are together there are wives who cannot forgive their husbands when they are 30 years in marriage you say you offended me the third year of marriage till today i have not forgiven you and yet we can go to god and say lord thank you for your mercy god if i don't pray three hours for the next one month let me die on my way to kaduna you did even you did even pray even for 10 minutes yet you have finished your masters it's called, it's called compassion listen i'm trying to plant in us something believers must be governed by a culture don't don't conquer the limitation of your earthly family there is no such thing like we are not like that nobody is born with compassion it's something that comes with revelation can you love and love genuinely some of us have black books huh? black uh, black books you write the names wickedness even as Christ forgave that luggage will interrupt your prayer do you know one of the greatest ways to minister is to minister by love it's amazing how all of these encumbrances can unclog they can clog the flow of God's power I want to prophesy please come Pastor Femi I want to prophesy to Pastor Femi right now and I stand here but I remember he kept me waiting at the restaurant the other day. He promised me that he was coming and forgot and he left me there. Now, I'm not justifying what he did, for instance. But now you want to prophesy and that anger and that annoyance. You see that? The nature of your prophecy will justify that it's not God that sent it. Because God gives good things. When you walk by love, even your health tells there are people who are sick today not because of oppression the way they think they think until veins the doctor these veins that come out on people's faces because of anger they are, they are imagining yet their hands are physically you cannot live like that you cannot be productive that way when they see other people just giving god joy koinonia is done and they are greeting ah, Pastor Femi, how are you they are just angry and they are waiting for who is angry like them so that i say come now that you are we are no. rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice learn to rejoice learn to forgive learn to let go it's okay it's okay the pot was not your own the food was not your own you know it's wrong you don't see a pot that you don't have anything and just want to eat what is there i was hungry i had visitors sometimes the people may not even be repentant just let go this is how unforgiveness works i'm holding him i'm not moving either are you seeing now i can't move holding him i'm holding him now yet i want to move i've kept him bound and i'm bound myself forgiveness is a type of giving there is a type of giving called forgiveness when you can forgive you are a giver it's not only seeds that you give forgive us our sins all men are humans don't kill your child because of the report card he brought him all men are humans they increase salary your son came back with a report card second to the last you want to kill him 
he's a human being i'm not justifying what he's doing and i'm not saying it's painful to raise school fees don't kill the boy just because he brought that result the boy you are killing today can be a prime minister tomorrow are you hearing what i'm saying yes learn to be there for people i've taught it in this ministry may god make you the shoulder for wounded people to be able to lean on that you are the one when you see people crying you are not the one who say look at this person crying crocodile uh, tears you are a wicked person to see a human being crying and you are still saying it's crocodile tears that you can stand and tell the person look i don't know why you are crying but let's agree can you believe that i don't have transport no problem no problem let's go we'll share together the attitude that is the attitude of a prayer warrior that when you want to pray when you approach god you know that you are human that's why i like this guy's song um what's his name um k strings that many song it's a very powerful song because it's a revelation of the frailty of men men are frail men are very frail there was a day these people who beg we are going to pray shortly some of these people who beg they just stood at my gate they kind of knock that they knock that gate you know even the polite it's as if they carried stone bang 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 ah i said my god what is going on immediately i opened i just saw the woman backing a child having one i was i was sad because i was praying and it was a big interruption I looked at the woman i was wondering and she looked at me i could see her hunger ravaged face i looked at the baby and then i just remembered i said let's assume i was the one or that was my mother and then i said what are you looking for then she now lied i said madam you are lying she's okay yes she lied but this really the thing i can't imagine that all that drama is happening there i can close my gate and say carry your instead of you to just beg you have you have now spoiled my mind and you are doing this there's this thing we call losing temper. I cast that spirit from your life forever. One more time. I cast that spirit from your life forever. I cast that spirit from your life forever. If there is anyone here under the influence of such a spirit, I'm saying it again by the grace of God and the spirit of the living God. I command that spirit to come out of your life now. Huh? Some of you can carry shoe, a nail, hammer, anything. It's a demonic thing. When you are approaching the prayer ministry, you must be able to replace all of those devilish things with genuine compassion. How can you be a father when you don't have that, that allowance? Children are children. They will be stupid every once and again. Are we together? someone was sending a text to someone to beg me for money that I will give him. Then I think maybe he forgot and forwarded the text to me. He wrote the number and told the person how how to say it. Now I'm not looking. I am Abba. So I'm not. He had already told the person what not to say and what to say. When I saw it, I looked at the text, and then the person later realized that I made a mistake. The person could not even, I tried to call the person, the person did not even pick, because he just felt, this, I'm, I'm, I'm dead, I'm finished. So while the person was complaining and doing that, I did a transfer to that person's account. And then I said, this part, give the person you want to pay. This one is for you. That was it. Then the person replied me and said, I'm ashamed of myself. I said, no. I said, what then is the excellency of being a father?
trespasses, even as we forgive. Lord, you are not the only one who has that mindset. I also receive it in the place of prayer. The grace to give allowance to people. Allowance to people. There are times people are talking to me and I know they are lying. I know what they are saying is not true. But I can understand. They are not lying because they are wicked people. If you are going through the pressure they are going through, sometimes you may be tempted to be like that. And it is that ability to be able to not endorse what they are doing, but override it with fatherhood. Are we together? If God can show you that kind of compassion and you don't have for many, you are not praying according to God's pattern. You cannot say, Lord, look down. my." Listen, there are many of us now, what is happening in our family is just because the man that was wicked is your father. But the truth is that that father man is under the causes of many people because of the way that man behaved for other people. Are we, are we together now? And then you now see and say, ah, my father was a doctor. Many people, he now destroyed many people. They've caused them. Oh God, overlook my father's wrongs. And God says, what of the people in your company? What of the people in your company? Someone was overwhelmed with the school fees of the children and he quickly carried one bag of water to rush and go and sell it and you cut the person. And the person just knelt down and was rolling there and said, I'm not a thief, sir. I'm, my wife is in the hospital. I've gone through pain. I'm not saying endorse him, but have the eyes to hear both the mouth and the hearts of men. You cannot deal with everybody generically. No. Many times, I don't like to see people without invitation because of how it interrupts my plans. But there are people that come to my house and knock and I look at them and once I see them, I can discern the heaviness in their hearts. And I say, although this is not the way I do it, but I have to attend to you. Listen, let me tell you this. If you do not show compassion the day you will need it that day that's the day you will know that it is good to sow seeds of compassion many of us are not compassionate are we together we'll stop here we'll take part three i'll finish this up then i'll now show you the dynamics of prayer but this is very powerful our father what in heaven faith hallowed be your name reverence your kingdom come priority give us this day your needs met on account of your desire to see his kingdom come and then forgive us we stand forgiving every one of us because of his mercy and grace why will you not show the same grace to others some of you, after this night's prayer meeting, you need to go back and just call your younger sister, your younger brother, and he said, you know what? It's three years now. It's over with all of that. We cannot be fighting. Some of you can even be here in Koinonia. After Koinonia, you just walk up to that department and just hug the person. And you, when they hug you, make sure you don't behave like a devil. After this preaching that I've spent time to preach, when somebody comes to make peace, how are you? just sit and say but, but you know there's no special ceremony we are all sinners we were saved by the grace and the mercy of God the same Lord is rich unto all yes you do that and see what happens the power of God can flow now you can trust what you see you can trust what you hear you cannot be receiving revelation under a, with a heart full of bitterness and envy and believe it's coming as pure as it left heaven. That impurity in you, you believe it just passed like that? No, sir. I don't trust a man with bitter spirit. You cannot minister to me. You cannot prophesy to me. There will be a corruption. It's why men of God must have a large heart to love. Ladies, you must have a large heart to love. This is to get offended. You must crush it today. We are going to pray for the next five minutes or so. Anger. Rage. Over my dead body until, you know, until I die. Stop all those things. You are a child of God. There is a pattern of prayer. Compassion. Love. 
as I approach God, I approach Him with joy and gladness. I know that He's my Father. I know that I can cry my heart and pour my heart to Him. Are we together? Hold someone's hands. Hold the hands of someone. Teach us to pray. To pray in a way and manner that produces results. Believers, hear me. The way many of us are praying, we are not going to get God's attention that way. Is the reason why ministers stand on stage and they speak and there is no backing from heaven. They may fast. They may pray. They may do night vigils. But it looks like God is running away from them. And the key is not just impartation. Tonight's teaching is like water purifying every dross in your heart. It could be that you are not approaching God. You are approaching God as a superior option. No. It can be that you are not approaching him by faith. You are waiting for visions. You are waiting for this. And the devil continues to play with your mind. The moment you are praying, you will now have a dream. And you trust the dream more than the word. It is true that you are praying. And now you went back to sleep after the prayer. And you saw one of your legs tied in a rope. A believer who loves God will look at the authority and the power of scripture more than that experience. That the word of God can superimpose itself upon any situation. Not to turn back and say, I've been praying and this is working. Satan knows that the sense realm is more real to you than the word of God. So he will continue to manipulate experiences in the sense realm. To help you use it to be assessing whether you are making progress. The basis for progress is the authority of the word of God. Not experiences. They can come. They can be there. But they are not the reason. They are only support systems. Thy kingdom come. I cannot burn this enough. Take away selfishness from your life. Reorder your desires back to God. Ask yourself why. Not just what you want. Why do you want it? I want fame. Why? What for? I want money. I want to be a billionaire. I want to be a millionaire. What for? So that when people see me, they can know. And God says, nonsense. People's souls are perishing. People are dying. You come up with a mundane desire and you want God to endorse it. No, sir. Apostle, I want to become a very powerful man of God. Why? Because I have a group of five friends and all of them are anointed. They've gone ahead of me. But none of them has been able to meet you to receive impartation. So let me receive fast so that when I go, and God says, look at this. I can pray for you with all my heart. I guarantee you, you will not receive anything. Because I'm not the originator. I'm only a steward of the grace. Give us our daily bread. When you subscribe to the desire of God, it is alright to ask for your daily bread. Not even monthly. Your daily bread cannot come from your job. Your daily bread comes from his hands. I should be able to see the difference between your salary and your father's benevolence. I should see the difference. I should see an alert in your account as a result of your monthly salary. I should see an alert in your account sent by God. And then forgive us. Compassion. People will wrong you. When I pray for couples and I counsel couples, sometimes they are happy, they hug myself in my presence and they say, I will never do it again. And I know they are joking. Your lifetime is too long to not do it again. You will shout at her. It's true. You are born again. She will shout at you. One day she will almost want to carry the frying pan and slap you. So, in advance, you forgive. And never allow that be a determining factor whether the marriage will continue or end. Otherwise, you will not be able to marry successfully on earth. 
except you wait for the marriage the last the, the marriage between the lamb and his bride that is the only marriage that the bible guarantees that is ideal any other one on earth you are joking where you see two couples laughing some of them are going through three times worse what you are going through they have learned how to laugh not just through the storm above it under it around it forgive say i hate my mother forgive the old woman is there you you are walking you've never sent even five thousand no call her mama i love you i heard a message and i want to tell you that i love you i may not have much i want to send richard say why are you sending me money has god not been keeping me you can say oh so just because i want mm, don't do that <laughs> let your obedience be perfect what you have started finish well finish strong finish strong don't allow people shortchange your obedience when you start something well finish well are you ready to pray lift your voice everybody in one minute cry to the lord don't wait to be told what to pray for please pray what part of that Lord's prayer applies to you. Some of you is who art in heaven. Take away doubt and fear from my heart. Let me learn to walk by faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please him. And everyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and a rewarder for some of you is hallowed be your name Lord plant the spirit of reverence afresh in my heart that I will not only love the Lord I will share the Lord a godly and a holy reverence Some of us, it is give us our daily bread. Your heart has already been enlightened to the kingdom. It's time to call for your daily bread. Your daily bread should not start when you get a job. Your daily bread should start when you align to his purposes. Lord, send help. My convenience is profitable for the kingdom. And lastly for tonight,
forgive us our sins and our debt. Hallelujah. Look up, please. I'm about to do an altar call. For many of us here, it is literal. Forgive, oh God. I need mercy and I need forgiveness. I need cleansing and I need to be granted access to the new and the living way. Listen to me. Jesus clearly told us that all men are frail. We are frail. The best of us is frail. Are we together? That's why he brought Jesus. Jesus is God's love. The gospel of salvation is a revelation of the love of the Father. Are we together now? A revelation of the love of the Father. Listen to me demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of the Christ. That means that when we believe that report, we come and we receive of his life. He says that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have life eternal. There are people here, the main auditorium, overflow one, two, three, by the roadside, and those online who are saying, Apostle, while I heard you teach, I know that I have not truly opened up my heart to obtain, to receive the mercy of God. I need a new life. I need a new start. And there are others who are saying, Apostle, I've given my heart to the Lord, but I just need mercy in my life. Because the way things are now, I don't even know what to say about myself again. Wherever you are, we have a few minutes whether you are inside or outside, please make your way very quickly. If you are coming here, make your way. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, let's celebrate them. God bless you. Keep coming. If you are coming from outside, please run. tonight. Don't sit back and allow such a powerful teaching on prayer and not capitalize on it tonight. Jesus is calling. He's saying, come. Remember, he's not only our father. He wants to be your father tonight. If you've been evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more? Your heavenly father. Listen. I don't care what has been your story. I don't care what your life has been. You see, let me tell you, it is only in the body of Christ that, and in the church that we do not receive people when they come to Jesus. We stand with our religious self. No. Let me tell you this. Never forget this word. God is love. It's a powerful revelation. Let the revelation of the love of God consume you. Let it possess you. God is love. It is the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. The goodness of God. Not the judgment of God. The goodness of God. He lets you see his love. His insistence. Regardless of yourself. No shadow you will light up. every one of you standing here some of you are standing to make this decision for Jesus the very first time some of you are rededicating your lives we're one big family and it's an honor to guide you through this I'd like you to pray 
with joy in your heart. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Jesus is standing right here. Men may condemn. Men may point fingers. But when you come to him, he will say, forget about them. Focus on me. They are not Abba. I am the only Abba, your father. Lift your right hand, please, those of you in front here, and say this after me. You are standing before Jesus himself. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe in you. I believe in your love. I believe in your mercy. I believe in your grace. This night, I declare that you are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my King. I hand over my life. I hand over my days. I hand over my destiny to you. And I receive in exchange your life, your love, your grace. I declare that I'm a child of God and I move forward ever and backwards never. Amen. Please keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for these ones. I love them with all my heart and we thank you for granting them the grace to respond to this call tonight. I pray that their sins be forgiven and I pray that you give them a new beginning in the name of Jesus. By his grace, may he take you from glory to glory. That this decision you have made tonight, let it be the platform for your rising, the platform for your excelling. In the name of Jesus, may the grace of God and may his hand take you from glory to glory. In the mighty name. We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selman, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI. To stream Koinonia Live, go to mixler.com forward slash Koinonia and download the teachings on koinoniasermons.org For questions and inquiries, call 0814-721-4444 or 0907-777-7853 We love and